Experience it on FS1. The sun has started to set in the fight capital of the world, and what better place to crown the UFC's inaugural flyweight women's champion than Las Vegas, Nevada? The Ultimate Fighter finale weigh-in show starts now. They are in Las Vegas. We are in the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. Karen Bryan here alongside Season 2 and Season 3 Ultimate Fighter winners Rashad Evans and Michael Bisping. We do have Heidi Angel on location as well. And guys, before we get started, it is Throwback Thursday. Yes. I just want to share a little something uh, with the fans at home. Whoa! Who are these look gentlemen? at this guy here. And notice how we got both of our hands up as if we knew we were going to yes. be world champions. Absolutely. Hey, 13 years ago or 12 years ago, we still look good. Still you look do. Good. You know, come on, still hey, got it. I'm oh, absolutely. Dead. Both of you aging like fine wine, folks. There was some high drama, though, this morning at the morning weigh-ins. We've got a new main event to kick off the birth of a new division's championship. Heidi Andral is on location with all the details. Thank you very much, Karen. Well, what a whirlwind day here in Las Vegas. I was at the official weigh-in this morning where I had an opportunity to speak with the VP of Athlete Health and Performance for the UFC, Jeff Nowitzki. He informed me that Sajara Eubanks was, in fact, off the cart. He also told me that she was cutting weight at the Performance Institute last night. Uh, she was being monitored closely. When a medical concern came up, they brought in the consulting physician, Jeffrey Davidson, and he, in fact, deemed her medically unfit to fight. It's important to note that she's had trouble in the past with weight cuts if you remember back to that first fight in the house, she actually had to cut her hair to meet the 125-pound requirement. So her future in this division is definitely uncertain. Though one fighter's loss becomes another fighter's gain. Roxanne Matafari now moves up to face Nico Montano in the inaugural UFC Women's Flyweight Championship. I spoke to Roxanne this afternoon. She said she got the call about 2.30 this morning. She was shaking. She could not go back to sleep. She said she's concerned about Eubanks' health, but she's worked hard and feels she is deserving of this opportunity. All right, we'll keep you posted here in Vegas. For now, Karen, back to you in L.A. All right, thanks so much for that, Heidi. Michael, what's your take on this? Listen, it's disappointing, but it's a lack of discipline at the end of the day. On the show, she made weight three times. It wasn't easy, but she did it. She made the weight. She's gone away from the Ultimate Fighter. She's left her her own devices, and she hasn't made weight. It's her UFC debut, and she's fighting for a world title, and she still can't make weight. Listen, I like her, but this is very, very disappointing. Yeah, it is disappointing. I mean, you get a chance to fight for the belt. And it's very sad because I seen her in New Jersey about a month ago and she looked really, really good. So I was really looking forward to seeing her uh, competing because I knew I was going to work this card. And uh, it's just sad, man. Yeah. I mean, she has so much potential. So much. And I think the fact that she only has five fights, she's going to get better after she makes weight a couple times. All right, folks. Well, as we know, we still have a show to get to. So we're going to get to tonight's ceremonial weigh-ins in Las Vegas. I hope you're ready. Our MC tonight is light heavyweight champion Daniel Cormier. Take it away, DC. Welcome to Las Vegas. Welcome to the Park Theater. Tomorrow, history will be made. First UFC flyweight champion, Dana White, the UFC president, the Octagon Girls, matchmaker Sean Shelby. I'm excited, guys. I'm excited. Let's get things started in the flyweight division. Jillian Robinson versus Emily Whitmar. First to the stage, Emily Whitmar. Well, if you watched this season of The Ultimate Fighter, you saw Emily Whitmire. She was ranked number eight on that season. She's making her UFC debut. Fun fight, she's a very close friend and training partner with Misha Tate. Tough enough, amateur strawweight champion. And here she is stepping onto the scale. 125 for Emily Mitt Whitmire. Jillian the Savage Robertson. Jillian the Savage Robertson, her MMA ambitions are big, being the youngest competitor on the season of Tough. When she was young, she wanted to start a career really early, and her father thought, nah, you better wait. So on her 16th birthday, her father finally gave her a blessing to compete, and she's been competing ever since. One twenty-five and a half for Jillian Robertson. Oh, yeah. yeah, look at it's the there. finals. They're not in the house anymore. Nope. Yes, you're right. <laughs> yeah. They were all so polite in the house. I was so polite. Yeah. 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 Y
back from the back for the televised in prelims. the house. We have Ariel Sunshine Beck versus Shauna Dobson. Shauna Dobson is a fourth grade teacher. She said she's had the support of her students uh, throughout this experience. They even drew pictures of UFC tickets and some even brought gloves for her to sign. She actually did lose a fight to and a half for Shana, Roxanne Danger on the Dawson. show on the first episode. But, yep. uh, well, she looked good opponent, on the feet. Kareem. She looked very, very dangerous. Oh, Ariel Beck. Sorry. Ariel Beck. I'm sorry. I went forward. <laughs> Come on, DC. All right, DC. We love you. Ariel oh. Beck, folks, of course, obviously making her UFC debut. Uh, she's got a record of four and four, but I tell you what, you know, she was on Eddie Alvarez's team on the show. She lost by submission to Montana De La Rosa, but that was one of my favorite moments from the show was the speech that Eddie Alvarez gave her afterwards mm. about overcoming what? 25 and a half for setbacks. Ariel Sunshine um, Beck. Was really, uh, uh, really just a great moment on the show for me. So best of luck to Ariel, seeing how she moves on after that loss. Next up in the women's flyweight division, Kareem Gavorgian versus Rachel. All right, Rachel folks, thank you for Ostevich. joining us. You are now watching the Ultimate Fighter finale live from Las Vegas. You just saw Seton Hall beat Texas Tech, and here we go with our wave. Rachel Ostevich was uh, rightfully upset this morning when her opponent missed weight by five and a half pounds. She even said, I'll go in that sauna and help her to cut that half pound. Rachel will get 30% of Kareem's 125 for Rachel Ostevich. 30%, 30 percent They upped it. They upped it. They upped it. Oh, wow, they I like it. that. I'm glad he's so. Next to the stage, her opponent, Kareem Gavorgian, the princess. Kareem missed weight. Kareem Gavorgian missed weight by five and a half pounds. The person half. told me they flew she from Moscow to LA. LA. Now later, fight was actually had to Uber to Vegas. Then this morning, another mishap. They went over to the Performance Institute instead of the hotel, blaming these issues for the missed weight. I feel like less time putting on lipstick, more time running, and she One doesn't make it. and a half for Kareem. Michael. No, I'm serious. No, I, you know, I, it's, it's not, not about not, the image. But it's not about fairness, the image. You're going to do the work not, in the gym. They're, 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 they have five fights. They don't know about cut weight. They don't know about the game yet, man. They're still babies. Hey. They're in the UFC. Hey, you got a point. To be fair, image is part of the game, Michael. So Michael's a tough guy. Next up did in the middleweight hey, division, you know, Andrew El Dirte yeah, Sanchez versus Ryan James. First up, Ryan James. Ryan James is known for his holiday cards. He has two cats and a corgi, and they always dress up. In fact, the last one was all of them in tuxedos. But now, his girlfriend is pregnant, so this year's theme is going to be furry babies against the new baby. 185 for Ryan James. And his opponent, Andrew Sanchez. Andrew Alberte Sanchez. His coaches call him a gritty, hard-working hillbilly. Um, seems like a hard-working guy. Obviously, tough 23 light heavyweight winner. Four first round finishes, six wins by KO, two wins by submission. Let's take a look at him. 185 and a half for Andrew As Sanchez. Usual, looks in great shape. Big smile on his face there. Yeah, dirty, I like Both him. of them are big smiles. <laughs> These guys don't want to fight each other. No, they want to be friends. Nice shorts. The featured bot of the prelims, Christina Marks versus Montana De La Rosa. Montana De La Rosa is a super mom, as her husband says. They actually have a six-year-old daughter who is a wrestler, like a little mini-me. She actually is a six-year-old state wrestling champion, fighting the boys and the girls. Her mom got her into jiu-jitsu at four and wrestling at five. 125 and a half for Montana. Yeah, she said she wants her kids to fight. And, and her I, opponent, I was, Christina I don't know, I wasn't sure Bunch. about that one. The kid's very young. Says the man whose son is going to be a great fighter. <laughs> Christina Mark started her career as a Muay Thai fighter, then transitioned into MMA. Her fight, first fight was actually at a strip club, man. <laughs> you know, she came a long <laughs> way since then. She's here in the tough now. and a half for Christina. Since she left the tough show, she's been working on the ground, and she feels like she's definitely closed the gap on, you know, being able to get take down so much. So she's, she's been I working think that hard might be, the show. 
more fights at the strip club than <laughs> what, what you might think. I was just gonna ask. Welcome Next back to the desk. We are ready to weigh in the fighters on the six fight main card. Next up, it is Bantamweights. Mike, uh, take it away on our undefeated Welshman, Brett Jones. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Brett Jones comes from the Valley of Wales. That's how they talk in Wales. You probably don't know this, Karen. Uh, he's undefeated, 14 and 0, and this guy has a lot of hype behind him in the UK, of course. BJJ Purple Belt, Judo Black Belt. Muay Thai brown belt, didn't know you could get belts in Muay Thai, but apparently you can. Uh, as I say, a lot of hype behind this guy, and he's literally pulling <laughs> his socks up. And um, that not is sure fun. about the combo. Yeah. Maybe he can get some sun while he's in this. He's undefeated, great undefeated in the octagon. He's not undefeated on the scale, because don't ever do that again, Bet Jones. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm disowning you. His opponent, you. Joe Soto. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Joe Soto's on a three-fight win streak and looks to extend that. Uh, you know, he's a real contender in weight class, you know, and, and he's fought for the belt before, so he knows what it's like to actually be at the big show. Now, since he's fought for the belt, he worked on areas that he needed to on his stand-up. You know, stand-up wasn't as polished. for Joe Soto! And the way off of DC. His stand-up wasn't as polished as it is now, and he's gotten a lot better, so look for fireworks out of Joe Soto tomorrow. To be fair, he took that fight with TJ on a day's notice. Yeah. You know, Burrell was supposed to be there. So, um, plus I love that he turned around More women's a losing skid to a winning tomorrow streak. Tomorrow night as movie. Deanna Bennett takes on Melinda Fabian. All right, folks, Melinda Fabian, she was so soft-spoken on the show. She is uh, from Hungary, so um, that was something that she was very proud yes. of, of, showing that off on the program. She did lose and really... Um, Again, one twenty-six. It was one of my favorite Fabian. moments, Michael. We talked about this on on Tough Talk. How just immediately she was still in the octagon Deanna, trying to figure out what went wrong. She's a woman who really she wants did. to get better and learn how to win. When she's cutting weight, Deanna Bennett says she listens to show tunes. She is a big theater buff, and now that the weight cut is behind her, all she is looking forward to is seeing her dog Atlas. She said she hasn't seen him in two months, and he is in route to Vegas to speak. Well, she kind of acted like a bit of a dancing. Yeah, I can see I don't see know that. what you call it on the show. And she's doing the same now, true to form yeah, for she, her. And done. it's not quite Christmas, but what, why not? Look at that, man. See, the women's <laughs> also oh, 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 my goodness. Oh. As we mentioned, folks, the house was so uh, a very friendly house. And they're going to hug it out again. And she just rubbed Dana on the face. As well. <laughs> yeah. Next up in the middleweight division, Eric Spicely versus Gerald Mearshart. Gerald Mearshart looks to bounce back after a tough loss in July and feels very confident going into this bout. Uh, Gerald is a black belt in the roof of sport kickboxing. He will look to use that kickboxing skill facing this grappling, grappling dominant Eric Spicely. Tongue tied. His <laughs> opponent, Eric Spicely. Yeah, well, you said it best, Richard. He is a grappler at heart, I think. He's going to look to take this fight down to the floor. Eight first-round finishes, and as we said about the grappling, six wins via submission, and he's just <laughs> epic fail once again on the scale. <laughs> Trying to press the lead. You know, he tried hard, but he, close but no Spicely. cigar. He's, but, uh, there he is. He's a character. Spicely has a, a, a real fun personality. Right, Not a fun stare. <laughs> <No, laughs> <no, no, no. laughs> <laughs> Women's flyweight next as Barb Hotcheck takes on Lucky Lauren Murphy. First to the stage, Lauren Murphy. All right, guys, I have got to give it up for Lauren Murphy. You know, this is a woman who caught a lot of grief for her approach to the show. She did lose her first fight, but she stayed ready on the show. One time, Sajara was having a tough cut. She kind of made a joke about being a vulture, sort of swarming around looking to pick up that fight. But this is a woman who knows how to stay ready so she doesn't have to get ready. 124 and a half for Lauren Murphy. I actually love that she knew that this was an individual game for her, and she did what she needed to do to her get here opponent, today. So. Barb, the little warrior, Hunchak. Barb Honchek is 37 years old, a veteran of the sport, former Invicta flyweight champ, and a smart cookie. A master's degree in ecological genetics, a bachelor's degree in molecular biology, and an associate's degree in applied science. Yeah, she was a smart girl. 125 and a half for the former Invicta flyweight champ. She's a little too smart for my liking. I'm just gonna throw it out there. Is that right? Bit of a smarty pants, I would say. <laughs> 
Let's see how smart she fights, though. Yeah, this is going to be a great fight. Both of these women have so much experience. Obviously, as we know, Barb was an Invicta champion. Uh, I'm really, really looking forward to this fight. Of In course, the co-main event, this Barb is, is going to be a good Austin. one. Sugar, Sean O'Malley versus Terrion Ware. Terrion Ware is coming back uh, after a late fight uh, loss, you know, late fight notice. And uh, Terrion Ware, you know, he's a boxing guy. And you know he's pretty skilled with his boxing. Um, his wrestling can use. I'm gonna be honest. His wrestling can use a little takedown help, but uh, he gets back up. The main thing about you need to know about where the fact that for he, Terrion, the flash where he flashes, he flashes, uh -oh. and he fights for, and he his fights hard. He comes to bring pressure. Sugar Sean O'Malley. No, that is not Sideshow Bob. That is Sugar Show Sean O'Malley from Dana White looking for a fight. Knock the guy out, and here he is. Ripping his top off, very, very eager. This guy is flashing. He's loud. Sugar Sean. He's obnoxious. He's in your face, but he's fun. Look at this. And you this, love him. <laughs> this is how a Wayne should be. Get in his face. Let him know you're gonna knock him out tomorrow night. I mean, yeah. that's how he was. It was a contender series. Dana White contender series. Two Dana White contender, contender series. series. What did I say? You I said know. something wrong. It don't matter. Oh, and for oh. the first time in UFC <laughs> like history, the women's flyweight title will be won by Nico Montano. Takes on Roxanne Modafferi. First to the scale, the happy warrior, Roxanne Mataferi. And I can't say enough about Mataferi. You know, honestly, watching the show, she was one of my favorites. She had such great energy. And I, can, I, I cannot say enough about how happy I am that she finds herself in this position where she's fighting, uh, you know, she's fighting for the, for title. the title. And she's a pioneer. One twenty-four. She really is. And look at the Zox. She's got just a weird style. She's got a lot of weirdness, but I, I, I like her a lot. Nico you know, say she looks good. She looks amazing. She looks Don't like herself. Her. Well, here she is, the rightful finalist. No disrespect to uh, Roxanne, Nico Montana. Three wins, all by decision, against very, very tough competition in the house. You gotta wonder what she's thinking right now. Of course, she prepared for a very, very different opponent. But again, you know, she doesn't look bad. She just happens to be that big smile on her face. See, there you go. I bet she feels a little bit relieved because honestly speaking, you know, Sajara is definitely tough. You know, but Roxanne's tricky. Oh, here go. <laughs> oh. Thank you. oh, man. That's a good one, Roxy. Hilarious. Of course, Nico Montano, folks, could be the first Navajo Native American champion in the UFC, which would be something really special. Roxanne, what an interest in 24 hours. You come to fight, now you're fighting for the championship. Walk us through your thoughts right now. I'm super excited to be here. I'm super excited for this opportunity. Um, it's amazing enough that I'm in the UFC and I have this chance to fight, but it's such an honor to be fighting for the title. Good luck tomorrow night, Roxanne Mataferi. Thank you. Nico, people didn't expect you to be here, but you ran through the tournament, now you're on the cusp of a championship. How are you feeling? less than 30 hours before the fight? Um, I'm feeling truly blessed, you know. It wouldn't, I wouldn't have had this opportunity without the Ultimate Fighter show, and I'm just ready to show my skill. Good luck tomorrow night, Nico. Everybody, the Ultimate Fighter finale tomorrow night. Thank you guys for coming. Appreciate it. See you tomorrow.